Hey everyone, my name is Veronica Cole and welcome to the sew along for my first Know Me pattern. We'll be sewing uh, 2005 today, which I am super excited about. We're gonna be focusing on view A, which is going to be this top portion. So I was really inspired by Sweetheart Tops. Sweetheart Tops are definitely something that I love and I love the versatility of this pattern. You can either use a sheer top giving it a nice sexy or classy appearance or you can color block with two opaque tops. The possibilities are literally endless. This pattern has been drafted for wovens or double knits. So you can use something like a ponty knit or you can use something like a cotton woven like for quilting. This pattern is also a crop top style and it features an elasticized waistband giving some really good definition to your waistline as well as balancing out a um, top part that has a little bit more ease to it. So with that let's go ahead and get started with cutting out our pattern pieces. Okay so today we're going to be sewing the Nomi pattern ME 2005. We're going to be taking a look at view A today, which is the top. The top is a color blocked situation where you can either choose to use a mesh or a um, just another opaque fabric in order to make that happen. On the back of the envelope, we have the suggested fabrics, which are cotton blends, linen blends, stretch wovens, a ponty knit or a double knit. And then we also have the notions that we're going to need, which we're going to need one and a quarter inch wide elastic as well as one quarter of an inch elastic. And we're going to be putting that one and a quarter inch around our waist with the quarter inch around our wrist for the sleeves. Inside the packet is in addition to our tutorial, we will have the finished measurements. So we've got the finished measurements here. As you can see, I've already made my notes as far as fit goes here. And then on the back of the envelope, we will have the body measurements. So that's helpful in deciding what size you're gonna be sewing because not everybody wants um, it to fit the same. The top and the pants are designed to fit a little bit looser. So there is a little bit more ease here. So you do have a little bit more space for sizing options. One of the other things I wanna make sure that I highlight is that if you are in between sizes, make sure that you grade from your shoulder size on out um, because it's a lot harder to take in at the shoulder than it is to um, take in otherwise. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at our pattern pieces that we're going to be using today. Up first, we've got the yoke front. This is piece number one. We're going to be cutting uh, two of these on a mirror image. And so I have cut a 22 women's here. And this is going to be this top part on the shirt. We've got piece five, which is the back. And this also will be cut two on, or rather this will be cut on the fold. This is piece number two, which is that little front piece that dips down. This will be cut on the fold as well. Here is piece three, which is the side front. And so this will be cut on mirror images. We've got piece number four, which is the back yoke, which is seen right here. And this will be cut two mirror images. And then we have a very large um, sleeve piece, which is piece number seven. I wanna highlight here that we do have um, both pleating lines as well as gather lines. So you'll wanna pay attention to that when you're cutting out your patterns to make sure that you go ahead and mark those pieces appropriately. And then the final piece is piece number six, which is the neck facing. And here you can see I use a different color in order for it to pop out. You don't have to use a different color. You can make sure that yours actually matches, which is what the pattern is designed to do. Okay, so now we've got all of our patterns pieces cut. I went ahead and went with a mesh with some little swans on it for the contrast of the top, and that is view A. I have my elastic pieces already cut, and then this is my waistband elastic. Again, the measurements for this is one and a quarter inch, and then these are a quarter inch, and then this is my main bodice fabric. The first thing I'm gonna be doing is stay stitching uh, from here to there 
and I'm gonna be doing that on that top yoke piece and then I'm going to also be stay stitching the bodice piece the main bodice piece in between the two notches that I have marked here so I'm gonna head over to my machine and go ahead and do that first one of the important things to remember if you are using something like mesh is to make sure that your tension is set appropriately. So make sure that you're doing that as you're going ahead and doing your stay stitch. And stay stitching is such an important part of sewing your garments together so that they can hold up the shape that they're supposed to. So do not skip this step, friends. Okay, so now that we have top, we have uh, stay stitched everything, we're gonna go ahead and work on these sides. So we're gonna pin these right sides together. So we're gonna pin this together here. And then we're also going to pin this side together as well. So I've got my pins here. I'm actually just gonna clip it together because I generally don't like to use pins. Um, so we've got making sure that you line up your tops so that you get a nice sharp seam. Our seam allowance here is going to be 5 eighths. So make sure that you are keeping that in mind as you are sewing this together. Um, I did do my stay stitch about a quarter inch away. So that will not be able to be seen once this is put together. So this is gonna open up like that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna head on over to my machine and I'm going to so my 5 8 seam allowance right down both of these here. Okay, so now that I've gone ahead and I have sewn these pieces together, this is what it looks like. You're gonna wanna go ahead and make sure that you press your seams. I have finished my seams with a serger. You're going to want to finish your seams either with a French seam, a double seam, or um, a serger, just to make sure that your threads don't go uh, bananas after you go ahead and wash this. So all of my seams will be finished with a serger stitch. So um, going forward, I will not show that. Just know that they've been finished with a serger. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and attach our front yoke to this, um, to these two pieces that we, or these three pieces that we've sewn together. So I'm gonna just go ahead and again, clip the um, important pieces together. I'm finding my middle piece. And so for this, you're just going, because you're going to be sewing on a curve, you're going to wanna make sure that you go ahead and ease that in slowly, lining everything up together so that it maintains its shape. So I am going to stick a pin in the very center point because I do want to make sure that that point stays pointed. So now I'm going to go ahead on over to the machine. I'm going to sew this first and then I'm going to serge it. So now because I am using a mesh and I don't want you to be, I don't want this to be able to be seen when I'm wearing it, how you can see 
this here seam, I am gonna go ahead and press it down and then do a top stitch so that that hem is hidden because I definitely do not want that um, to be seen. So I'm gonna do a quick top stitch here, this is not part of the directions, but this is part of making the garment look more finished. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that top stitch now. Okay, so we have our next step, which is to go ahead, and this is the back yoke. And so we have our yoke pieces that are facing each other like this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a very narrow hem in the middle because again this is going to be something that um, is not completely closed because we are going to close it with the button so we're going to do a narrow hem just go ahead and clip that together and you're folding it into the wrong side so I'm just going to clip that I'm also just going to clip this piece at the top And I find that clips are better to work with um, mesh because there's like so many little dots. So we're gonna do sew straight down here. And then after we sew that together, we're going to attach it to our back piece here. And so the way that we're going to attach it is we're going to have our right sides together. So right sides together like this. And then we're just gonna go ahead and sew straight down the line. And then that is going to create our entire back piece. So let's go ahead to the sewing machine to go ahead and get that done. So we've gone ahead and constructed our back piece. We've got um, a nice top stitch here to make sure that our hem is not being shown through the mesh. And so the next step that we're gonna do is we're going to be attaching our front to the back by um, putting together our shoulder seams. And so we're just going to line up our shoulder seams here nicely together, matching right sides together of the front. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna sew this and this together. And then um, we are also going to do our side seams as well. So we're just lining the side seams up and doing that as well. And I will be going ahead and serging and finishing my seams at the same time as well. So heading to the machine. Okay, so we have gone ahead and attached our front to back. As you can see here, everything is attached. I did go ahead and finish this bottom piece as well because again, when I fold it up, I don't wanna have any of the um, fraying to occur. So now that we have done this, it's time for us to go ahead and move on to our sleeves. So our sleeves are giving drama. We have a pleat at the top, so we're gonna go ahead and pin this together because what we're gonna end up doing is sewing it down to here and that's going to give us our pleated action so we're going to go ahead and clip that together again you should have made sure to um, to transfer your markings which I did I used one of my pens so you can't really see it but it is an orange line to go ahead and mark that and then after we create our pleats, we're gonna go ahead and do a gather. So I've also marked here, so that we have a marking here as well as a marking here. We're going to gather this area around here. And um, again, our sleeves are giving, are giving drama. We're having a dramatic like Swan Lake situation here. So um, the gathering is going to give us that puff sleeve that is so beautiful. I will be using a gathering foot to do my gathering um, and I'll just be using a basic foot to do the pleating. So let's go ahead and head on over to the machine so that we can get that done before we add our sleeves in and finish this shirt up.
Once you've gone ahead and added your pleats, it's time to gather. Again, we are you should have already marked your markings between the points that you're going to be gathering, and you're going to want to make sure that you go slow, especially as you're going over that pleated area because it can get a little caught up. Look at how beautiful that sleeve is. Ugh. All right, so since we're here, we're going to go ahead and finish up the sleeves. I am folding it up because we have a one quarter inch elastic going through here. The markings were on the pattern piece for where you folded it up and put your hem in. So I'm just following that, um, that fold line there. And I'm just folding the right side in towards the wrong side. So the wrong sides are together here. Whether you, you're, you are using mesh or not, you're gonna wanna make sure that you really get close to that edge. Not so close that as you gather or put your elastic through the, the casing that it's gonna pull it out, but you definitely wanna make sure that you're close enough so that way you don't have any fraying as well as you don't have any excess fabric. Make sure that you're leaving about an inch so that you can go ahead and thread your elastic through there with no problems. All right, so now it's time to get this nice and finished up. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the facing um, or the neck band here. And um, I am going to do my first attachment with my serger. So that way it's a little bit easier in my opinion. Now I do wanna say that if you're using a mesh and if you're using a, a, a woven mesh, it's not going to be the most comfortable. So if you're someone who does not particularly love the way that the mesh feels, I do wanna encourage you to make sure that you use something that is a little bit more comfortable for you. You don't have to use the mesh um, to go around that, that neckband. You can absolutely use a bias tape or something that is more comfortable for your skin. Um, comfort is way important. So I have attached this waist, the uh, neckband on the right side because this is how I do my bias bands. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and fold this in half. I would have ironed it, but I find that this, um, this just does not, like even when you iron it, it just doesn't stay put. So what I'm doing is I'm folding it in half and then folding it one more time over. So that way it's just covering this here um, entire band. And then I'm stitching as close to the edge as I can get. So if you're using a bias tape, then make sure that you have sandwiched it properly. And if you're using a fabric that will iron, go ahead and iron it. So now that we have the neckband on, and I'll just show you very quickly how this looks. As you can see, we just went ahead and added that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hem my waistband as well. I find that it's a little easier to do when you don't have the sleeves on simply because there's less material that you're working with. So we're gonna go ahead and um, I've already marked on my, pad on my fabric exactly how much I've got to come up. So I'm gonna just go ahead and clip that um, so that way it's very, very clear about where it is that I am um, sewing through because we are gonna be threading this with the one and a quarter inch, um, one and a quarter inch elastic. So um, we're gonna be threading our elastics last. So we're gonna be doing that after we go ahead and add these um, sleeves on, which will be the second to last step so I'm gonna just go ahead and clip this out because this is going to be super fast and super easy because this is just a straight stitch across and so I'm gonna just go ahead pop this into the machine and I'm just gonna be sewing straight through that serger line so that that way it is um, a very nice seam so Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and put in our button, which goes in the back, kind of like this. I think I'm gonna put it like that, like this. And I already have, so I had some serger thread that was still on, so that's what I'm using as my loop. You can make your loop through making some serger thread or you can extend your thing, uh, your 
neckband on down. That's what I did on my first version. So for this, I'm just going to go ahead and attach this button. If you, you have a button foot, I highly recommend using it. That's what I'm using here and it makes it so much easier. So I have a um, safety pin right here. I've attached it to the end of my elastic and I'm gonna go ahead in through the back side of my elastic or rather of my sleeve and then I'm just gonna go ahead and push this elastic through. Take your time with threading the elastic to make sure that you don't end up twisting it as you're threading it. One of the things that helps me when I'm threading the elastic for the one and a quarter inch is using a Sharpie marker to go ahead and mark those points that are supposed to come together. This helps in preventing that it doesn't twist through the threading process. Once you're done threading your elastics through, you're gonna wanna go ahead and stitch those last openings closed so that way you don't have to worry about anything else. You don't want your elastic to come undone. Once you've stitched those points together and closed up those casings, you are finished. Your garment is done. All right, friends, thank you so much for joining me for the Sew Along of UA, which is the top of ME 2005. You now have a finished garment that is ready to be worn to whatever event that you have in mind. Remember that choosing different fabrics will allow you to really make this pattern exactly what you need it to be. If you want it to be more casual, go with something like denim like I did today. But if you want something more dressy, definitely try it out in a satin. I can't wait to see your makes and don't forget to tag me in them.